hello there. Many of you have asked and now I'm here to deliver. <laughs> One of the things that I find really, really fun is figuring out neat little workarounds to having cafe grade, if you will, drinks at home on somewhat more of a budget, maybe a little bit more in a, in a scrappy manner, if you will. Now, one of my absolute favorite at home coffee tools that is fairly affordable, fairly accessible is going to be the handheld milk frother. We looked at quite a few of these a few weeks ago, but we didn't really talk about the technique of using one. However, you all seem to ask, and so <laughs> I am here to now cover that topic. Beautiful, silky, cafe-grade milk with delicious microfoam is completely achievable with one of these tools right here, but they definitely have a bit of a learning curve. So today we're gonna dive into the tools you will need to use one of these. We'll talk about my technique behind using it and then we'll also look at some of the most common mistakes I see people do when trying to learn how to use one of these. Okay, let's start off with our first section. <laughs> I am now gonna pull in the, <laughs> the very egregiously in the way second angle here. We don't usually get uh, this up and close during videos. However, I want you to actually be able to see everything I'm doing. Uh, there is a, a bit of nuance to the technique we're gonna be talking about. Now, of course, the first thing you're gonna need is a handheld milk frother. There are quite a few on the market at many different price points. And I'll link the video that I did looking at six of them down below. However, the advice I'm gonna give today goes with any of them. So you can go super cheap, you can go super expensive, doesn't matter too much. The anatomy of a hand frother is pretty simple. You have the end, which is gonna be right here, and you'll likely have some sort of kind of some sort of coils that are wrapped around the tip here. This is what's gonna spin really fast and both incorporate air and then also swirl your milk. And then uh, <laughs> on the other side, you have your base and you will have an activation button somewhere on it. This one happens to be on the top. Now the next thing I very much recommend you have if you are frothing milk at home with a hand frother, it's gonna be a latte art pitcher. Usually on most espresso machine models nowadays, they will include one or you're more than welcome to go find one yourself. Although I suppose if you are watching this video, you likely don't have an espresso machine. So <laughs> you might have to find one of these independently. Now, of course, you could hand froth milk in a cup or something of the like. However, if you are looking to pour latte art, if you are looking to have really fine control over your milk, I do recommend getting one of these. They're a good investment the last you a while. You are going to need at least one cup probably two. One of these is going to be for heating up your milk and the other one is going to be the serving vessel that your final drink is poured into. Another thing I recommend you have on hand is going to be a temperature probe or a food grade thermometer of some type. We're going to be heating up our milk prior to essentially steaming it and you don't have as much handheld control over what temperature the milk is but in order to ensure you haven't accidentally scorched your milk one of these will come in super handy. And of course the last thing you need some milk. <laughs> now, if you are lactose intolerant or vegan, I recommend starting with oat milk. I think that is the most malleable and the, the easiest option as far as non-dairies go. However, if you do drink dairy milk, uh, I recommend starting with a higher fat whole milk. Usually whole milk on average in the US is about 3% fat. Uh, this one happens to be 3.8. It's a little bit higher, uh, but it's super tasty and I like using it. Now, everything we talk about today can be applied to any levels of milk that you like, be it non-fat or 2% whole or what have you. However, whole milk tends to be the most approachable and it tends to be the easiest to start with. So give yourself a little leg up, start with whole milk if you can. And of course, we'll need some coffee to pour into. So <laughs> I'm gonna go get some coffee kind of all prepped out for when we get into the technique part of this. I'll see you soon. I wanna give a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. Whether you prefer espresso or filter, Trade is a fantastic way to find coffees that will help you develop your palate and explore a wide range of flavors. Trade is a coffee subscription service that makes it easy to discover new coffees and get inspired to make your best cup at home every day. Trade partners with the nation's top rated independent roasters to send you the best quality coffee you can get. And whether you know what you like or are new to specialty coffee, Trade has you covered. You'll also never have to worry about running out of coffee again because Trade will keep fresh bags arriving to your front door at a cadence that works best for you. This month, Trade sent me a washed Ethiopian coffee from Reanimator, a roaster out of Philadelphia. With notes of floral honeys, stone fruit, and lychee, it's delicious on filter and has a complex mouthfeel that's really a treat. But again, if this particular profile isn't up your alley, then you can explore the world of flavor that Trade has to offer with their over 450 unique coffees. So if you're ready to get started right now, Trade is offering my subscribers a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase at drinktrade.com slash MDC. 
Okay, welcome back. <laughs> I'm getting very used to, to talking past the camera here. Again, apologies for the appearance, but I think this is gonna be really valuable when we get into the kind of the mechanics of the steaming. Now, starting off, before we dive into the nitty gritty of each step, I think it is valuable to talk about what process we are replicating here. We are essentially taking apart the role of the steam wand on an espresso machine and breaking it down into a couple different steps. The steam wand on an espresso machine is essentially doing two different functions. It is aerating the milk and is also heating the milk. Now our hand frother only does one of those functions, it only aerates the milk, so we need to heat it separately. I really recommend taking this very easy, just putting some milk in a microwave safe glass popping it in the microwave for about a minute. It will of course depend on the power and wattage of your microwave, but usually a minute for about eight ounces of milk will give you milk that ends up being around 130, around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's kind of the sweet spot. So I have my microwave safe cup. Let's get some milk started. Now, this eight ounces of milk, again, is going to increase uh, as we add air to it later. So this is probably gonna be enough milk for an in total, probably a 12 ounce drink. I do recommend when you are starting to learn how to milk froth at home, starting with smaller amounts rather than larger amounts, it is easier to scale up to bigger drinks. It is harder to go back down. Additionally, it will minimize your waste. Okay, microwave, one minute, we'll be right back. One minute in, I'm gonna check the temperature. Okay, we're sitting at right around 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little bit on the lower end of kind of standard milk temperatures, but that's a nice kind of sweet developed area. Very drinkable immediately. You won't have to wait too long on this. Now the kind of acceptable temperature for milk steaming tends to be between about 125 and about 160. I really wouldn't recommend going above 160. After that point, you tend to get, now in general, as a rule of thumb, the recommended steaming temperature for milk tends to be between 125 at the low end and about 160 Fahrenheit at the high end. You're welcome to play around within this range, but I really wouldn't recommend going too much higher than 160. At that point, those sugars start to really break down. You start to get more of that kind of burnt milk taste and less of that developed sweetness that whole milk is pretty infamous for. However, it is now time to transfer to our steaming pitcher. So do this over a sink if you're not practiced. Otherwise, good luck. Now we'll likely have to do this twice as I'm gonna really walk you through um, the positioning here, and then we'll do it for real afterwards. Now what we're gonna wanna do with our hand frother here is basically simulate the position that a steam wand would take if you were using one off of an espresso machine. Now rather than doing this and kind of going up and down, I do recommend taking a about 45 degree angle slant with your milk frother. A pretty good visual marker is if you have your pitcher kind of straight up and down, attempting to hit that middle point between the side here and the tip here. So 45 degree angle in at this little corner right here. Now there are gonna be two stages to using this milk frother. The first one is going to be adding air to the drink. So this is when you hear that kind of tearing sound. Uh, this is when you see the milk start to change in volume. The second stage is gonna be the incorporating the air throughout the rest of the milk. So we're gonna be looking for a whirlpool effect in this and we'll be distributing all that added air that's sitting at the top right now down through everything else. So uh, let me just do this for you once. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk through it and then we'll we'll break it down a little bit afterwards. 45 degree angle, hitting the corner right here. I'm gonna dunk my tip all the way underneath the milk, but I'm not gonna go to the bottom. That would be the bottom. I'm kind of just probably about like a centimeter or so underneath and then we'll start frothing. Now you can hear that light tearing sound. You can also see the tip of my frother as I bring it towards the surface and that incorporates air. Now you'll notice I'm doing this in, in very small batches here, I'm not grabbing too much air at once, just little tiny paper tears. Now. After I've seen this start to rise in volume, I'm gonna push my milk frother down closer to the bottom. I'm gonna stop bringing it up to the surface. So no more air is being incorporated. However, you will notice at the center, there's that kind of whirlpool that's spinning around that is causing all that air at the top to be distributed through everything else. Now this is where these hand frothers differ. Um, the amount of power in each one of them, the amount of rotations it does will all kind of impact how long each of these stages take. I would recommend swirling your milk until there are no more visible bubbles on top. You'll notice all the bubbles kind of gather in that center vortex. So once it looks glossy and clean of bubbles, you're probably good to stop. 
Now, ideally you have milk that has a nice kind of glossy texture to the top. You don't wanna to see too many big bubbles. You don't wanna see it kind of clumping up in the center. That was a little demonstration. I'm gonna do it one more time and let's actually pour it into some espresso so you can see the final texture. Okay, I'm back. Let's get started. Again, 45 degree angle, aim for the corner, dip the entire head underneath to start. Slowly begin to incorporate air, little bite-sized chunks. Once you see your milk start to grow, you can pretty safely dip that head back towards the bottom, start to look for that whirlpool, and start to see all those bubbles kind of disseminate <laughs> throughout everything else. Again, don't be afraid to adjust the head of your steam wand if you need to. Now, once everything looks good and incorporated, set it off to the side. And that right there is not a half bad <laughs> looking latte. Now that is a pretty decent looking latte. Now, of course, because I am filming this, there is an amount of time that's happening in between the steaming and the pouring and everything that wouldn't usually happen if you were just doing this at home. Uh, so usually if I was fully on my own, maybe it could be a little bit stronger milk texture, but I'm pretty happy with that. And also, tastes pretty good. Now it's taken me quite a bit of practice with my personal hand frother that I use before I'm able to achieve milk that I can pour a latte it with. It's just a thing of repetition and getting used to the tools you have. That is to say, I don't expect you to watch this video and instantly be able to create great foam with a hand frother. Even for baristas that are trained on machines, it takes them months, if not longer, before they pour art that they are proud of or happy to show off. And that's with folks who are, who are pouring multiple lattes every single day. Milk steaming and frothing is so much about learning the innate feeling of how the milk reacts, how foam reacts, and how quickly foam is added to milk. And really, there is no shortcut to that. It is just time and repetition over and over and over again. However, there are some really common mistakes that I see in handheld milk frothing that if you can avoid these up front, you will find your development to happen quite a bit faster than if you were kind of stuck in them. Quickly, before we wrap up here, let's talk about the top five mistakes I see in handheld milk frothing. The first mistake that I see most often is one we've already talked about a little bit, and that's gonna be overheating your milk. Now, uh, I'm gonna go overheat some milk. <laughs> let's see what happens. I'm gonna go put this in the microwave for a, for a long time. Ew, this does not look great. Okay, uh, let me see actually temperature wise where we're at. All right, that is some toasty 180 degree Fahrenheit milk. So uh, way off of our 160 cap. Now, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you can see it, but when you are heating it in the microwave, unless you are frequently taking it out and stirring it, like you see with milk on a stovetop, a kind of a kind of delicious film <laughs> has formed on the top. So first and foremost, that is a reason not to overheat your milk in the microwave. Secondly, while it's still very possible to froth overheated milk, the structural integrity of the milk has definitely broken down quite a bit. You'll start to see those bubbles popping a lot sooner. You'll start to see a lot of that air leaving. And also, thirdly, and most important in my opinion, just doesn't taste that good. There is a sweet spot for milk in its temperature and its frothing and it's not here. Now, the second mistake I see most often is gonna be in the actual positioning of your hand with the milk frother. And again, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but I think the position that most people naturally take when they have a milk frother, kind of a, an up and down. <laughs> it's a very violent, <laughs> almost stabbing position. I'm heating up my milk right now, so we'll give it, oh, never mind, it's actually done. This position straight up and down versus something like this that's on an angle is gonna give you far less control over how much air you're adding. Again, these coils are spinning very, very fast and when they touch the surface, they're drawing in air. So when you're at an angle, you have control over how much of the coils you're showing and essentially how much air you're drawing in. However, when you do this, you kind of have off and then you have on and you don't really have an in-between. So let me show you, turn it on and then come to the top and you're exposing all the coils, adding a ton of air super fast. And of course you can dump it down to the bottom, but you don't have as much control over the position of your wand leading to the same problem. Like you can sink it, but you're still starting a whirlpool where the coils are still exposed, meaning air is being drawn in. And uh, you get some really fluffy milk. 
really, really fast. Having this more slanted approach really allows you to control how much air you're bringing in. Additionally, it allows you far more leverage over creating this whirlpool that you'll need to incorporate all that air into a fine microfoam rather than just a layer of air sitting on the top. Now, the second to last mistake I see most often is people adding air at the end of the steaming process. Now, we talked earlier about dividing frothing into two separate sections. You have adding air and then you have incorporating air into the rest of the milk. And really, once you have stopped adding air, that is it. <laughs> You're done and you can't go and, and save your milk at the end by adding more air and then not incorporating. When you're looking to pour latte air, you want milk that is as smooth and as glossy as possible. So that means no big bubbles and big bubbles are what you're gonna create if you add air at the end. Now this also can be done just by like physical mistake. My milk's done. Anyways, as I was saying, adding milk at the end can also kind of be a user error of sorts in the sense that perhaps you have forgotten to take your finger off the off the activation button. Uh, perhaps you've accidentally started removing it or something of the like that will also cause air to get added. Let me show you. So you start your milk frothing, you add a, a reasonable amount of air at the beginning then you dunk it under and you create your whirlpool. But maybe you're looking at it and you're thinking maybe you didn't add enough air or maybe you want your milk to be a little bit thicker. Now we've already created some really nice glossy milk here. All that air is distributed. We take it to the top, we add some more air and then we're done. Or likewise, let's say you accidentally removed it in that fashion. Now you can see on top, we have quite a few visible bubbles. These are not gonna be as pleasant to drink. Since they have not had time to spin with the rest of the milk, they are not going to really incorporate even when you polish the milk. Really, you've just kind of created a, a lesser product than you had before. A better alternative for this, instead of adding air at the end, if you get halfway through your steaming and you decide perhaps you want more air, is to actually just let your milk sit once you're done with it. So froth your milk, continue spinning it, don't add any more air, and then just let it let it sit for a second. The foam in the milk will start to kind of solidify the longer it sits still. And so you can kind of catch it at a sweet spot if you leave it for a couple seconds to kind of firm up and then start pouring. Don't add air at the end, <laughs> trust me. Okay, and then the last most common mistake I see in hand froth is gonna be people not polishing their milk once they're done with the steaming process. Now, polishing your milk is the process that causes a lot of baristas to just kind of like <laughs> just bang their pitchers on cafe counters or your home counter. There's a very specific purpose to that. It's not just us releasing rage. <laughs> we are actually knocking out any remaining air bubbles that we might still have in our milk. This is a, a very important process. You'll also see us vigorously spinning the milk and it's kind of to that same degree of we wanna incorporate as much of that foam as possible. We wanna knock out air bubbles. We wanna have something super glossy and clean to work with. Now, I'll show you two ways to polish your milk that involve one singular pitcher, and I'll also show you one that is personally my favorite that involves two pitchers, if you happen to have two. Although milk pitchers are kind of that like coffee rabbit hole that once you get one, your second one comes pretty quickly after that. All right, let's froth some more milk. I finished frothing my milk, but as you can see, we, we still have some visible milk bubbles on top. The first thing you can do, cover it with one hand, Bounce it a couple times on the counter that. Now that knocked out some, but additionally, you can give it a light swirl. You can do something kind of circular and go a little bit back and forth. And just kind of balance the two until the surface of that milk looks pretty clear. Now, we still have a couple bubbles around the edge and while this, honestly, I'd be pretty happy to pour with, I wanna really knock out everything. I also wanna make sure that my foam hasn't set up too much on top. So I grab my second pitcher. I'm just gonna pour my milk down the side. Now this is a very tumultuous experience for the milk and it really reincorporates any foam that is now settled on the top back through the rest of the milk. It also has probably knocked out most of those large bubbles. There's one really stubborn one in here. However, you can look in there and you can see that milk texture and surface is a lot glossier than it was before. So if you have any remaining milk bubbles on top, polish your milk either by tapping on the counter, swirling, combination, or you can transfer into a separate pitcher. Okay, this was very fun. I'm taking this elsewhere now. So those were the tools, techniques, and common mistakes I see in hand frothing. Now, once more, I wanna reiterate with both caution and encouragement that learning how to steam milk correctly takes a lot of 
practice. I think a lot of home baristas and home brewers find a lot of discouragement in the fact that they're not able to pour latte art as well as baristas do in seemingly the same amount of time. But I do have to remind you that at most you are probably pouring two to three lattes per day, whereas baristas are pouring tens if not hundreds of lattes per day. And really that repetition is what's gonna teach you how you need to froth milk. Everyone's technique is a little bit different, but hopefully today these were some guidelines that you can take forward into developing your own technique. Anyways, I unfortunately do not have a beverage <laughs> to sip with me. I just have a, a pile of very warm frothed milk over here. <laughs> so I will leave you be, go on, go out there and practice. My name is Morgan. You can find me here on YouTube once a week plus shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. This was very fun. I hope it was somewhat educational. I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.